This is a Black & Decker MM575 from 2005. This particular model is a 12 amp, which is the bigger model. And after a while, this tends to get kind of full of crap, so you take the top off with four screws. It's got a Torx or just a regular screwdriver head on it. There's the standard blade. Here's the fan. There's one of the blades. Want to make sure you keep a fairly new blade on there because um, there's the brush holder, armature, stator holder. I've got the stator off here. There's the brush holder pieces. These are 3 8 inch nuts. It was a little bit of a drag in here, but looks like the stator magnets are still bonded. This is the gizmo that goes through. It holds the stator up. It's got a couple features here. Go through, rotate that around, and go ahead and put the stator on with this larger side up. This is going to go ahead and grab. Should have. Uh, there's a key on the bottom there. I'm going to rotate this around. See if it. There it is. Let's grab the key. It shouldn't. It's going to want to touch the edge because I don't have this thing to center it yet. There's key features here. There's a key here. And there's the key over here. This is going to go on like this. I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, oil on this oil I burned first. Okay, I put some oil on there. The key right here. It's got 3 8 inch nuts, hex head nuts, the size of that. Now, if I try to turn this, we'll see if it still wants to drag a bunch. So what it had, it had some metal chips in there that were dragging. And because I took it out, they were just stuck in there rubbing. It might have run over some bob wire or some uh, paper clips or who knows what, nails. Now it freely turns here without making any noise. If you get stuff that's trapped in there, what it'll do is rub against the stator and then um, tear the magnet up, heat up, and then adds the debonding. Again, you got to make sure the key's on this right. I'm going to put a little bit of oil because these are rusted, and then this should be no gap in here. Sometimes you got to kind of tap this in with a mallet or something, or just backside of a screwdriver, make sure it pops in there. Oops, I'm screwed up there. I can finger tight these on here. Open end wrench, really. It, you can take those off with that, but it's difficult to do. Better just to use a socket. They don't have to be too tight. They just got to be snug. Remember, that's plastic. I'm going to see if there's a gap here or not on the, the whole side. It's loose. I just kind of just snug it. Don't go crazy. 
There's no gap there really. And then I'm down turn this underneath here. Got the power off of course. It's free to rotate. And it did have some drag on this originally and that was just due to some crap that was down in there between the magnet and the armature and that just will add drag and then heat up the magnet so it doesn't necessarily always mean a fractured magnet forget what side the uh, brushes goes on there's a minus here and over here there's marked a plus plus the way the black is it's closest to this holder there's the brush goes into the uh, brass piece fits in there like that wire just kind of goes in that little groove piece holder of course has this little feature here it goes on heads have got Torx or Phillips which is kind of handy I'm just gonna hand start that and I'm gonna go ahead and put the get the positive and negative side This is a brush motor because this is actually a DC motor. Again, you don't have to go tight on these. I just kind of go snug and back it off. AC comes in here, 110 volts. Got a full wave bridge. This is a rectifier. This is just a heat sink on there. I've never actually replaced any of those. And I can reach down here and rotate the blade around. If one of these diodes does go bad out of the four, it'll run at a slower speed. I've never really seen that, but they always tell you that. Typically, I've found the reason one of these motors runs slow all of a sudden is a part of the magnet breaks off, either because you've overheated the heck out of the machine or because you got some crap on here. So beware if you cut up a bunch of uh, metal, it can get sucked up in here and get in the gap. The gap is actually very narrow in here. It's about the thickness of a credit card. And that's our, actually it's an MM575 mulching motor, what this is. There's a couple marks I put on there where the bosses are. Just when I move this back and forth, I can see how to put it on easier. That's you should tighten it up and back off about a quarter of a turn. Okay, got it plugged in. Got no dragging noise now. I'm gonna unplug this and I need to look at the spring next to see if it's if it's broken or not. It looks like the spring on here has got to be pulled past this little feature. And I'm not sure if that was done purposely, but that's what keeps the door shut. Yeah, I'm going to push that spring past the feature there. There you go. Oh, I've never had done that before. So I'm not sure if that was done purposely, but there's the spring. I've wound push back with a screwdriver here to get into that feature. That's the mulch door. I got no drag. I usually try to replace the fan when half of the blades are gone. There's one there. When they're half gone, I tend to put a new one on. You don't want to let it get all the way gone because you'll get no airflow. It would tend to burn the motor up, especially if you push it hard.